I love plants. I love how they shift and change through the season. I love how as gardeners, we don't have complete control over them and that you can discover these little moments of complexity, these little moments of wonder and just how you can create art or big sweeps of colour through the use of plants as well. I'm Jack Semler. I'm a plant practitioner, so I'm a horticulturalist, but I also do other things with plants that involve design and the arts in public spaces and in private homes. And I also support other allied professionals like landscape architects to do their work. This is my home garden. It's called Heartland, and we're in the Bayside suburbs of Melbourne in Frankston. I feel like it just fuels my creativity having all of these plants around me and that it really drives research and development when I think about my planting design. It's about naturalism, but in an Australian context. I want to feel like the gardens belong in a dry summer climate where I live in Victoria, but I really want to have wonder and beauty through the plants throughout the year. And so a high diversity of plants I refer to it as being a maximalist, where we're about as many plants as possible across the seasons. I start by creating a short list of plants. I always find it useful to start thinking about what those hero plants might be in a design. So the ones that I want to see a lot of, um, the ones that a super resilient that will flower for a long time. So I'm always starting off with those kind of key plants and then I'm building and I'm thinking about how that would roll year round. This is in my backyard. I call it a dry dynamic planting because it's resilient for our dry summer climate in Victoria but it's dynamic in the way that bulbs will come and go throughout the seasons. Different herbaceous perennials will come and go as well. So it constantly shifts and changes throughout the year. It's resilient, but I want it to be beautiful as well and for it to have a particular atmosphere. And I love the seed heads of the grasses and how they create this really gauzy effect in the garden, a softness, and also as well as having a tapestry of foliage at the ground level, I want to have a floating layer of flowers so that you see all the delight, the complexity and the diversity of the plants. This is an incredible Calandrinia grandiflora. It's got this amazing silver succulent base and then these incredible flowers, like these long flower stems with these sea of violet purple flowers and I just think it's like plant crack. It's so incredible, the colour and the way the flowers kind of float above the succulent base. This is an Australian Pelargonium, Pelargonium rodnianum. We use it as one of the base plants in this garden to cover the ground, but I love the charming little pink flowers. When I look at my work and I look at this garden that I've created, I just feel an, an understanding of the power of plants, that you can just transform spaces, places, you can transform your life through plants. I was very lucky I grew up on a farm and I come from generations of plants women. So my aunts, my, my, all my family, my grandmas, they were all very passionate gardeners and they created these incredible gardens in very harsh environments that were really dry and arid. And they were so abundant and generous and they were filled with all this kind of color and sweets of succulents and unusual plant combinations. It really taught me that gardens, you know, they are sustenance around our homes, but they're also places for creativity too. And my dad worked for the primary industries, and so I would go and collect seeds with him on the weekend. And, you know, just as I grew up, it just felt like it was always 
plants around us and that gardening was just a way of life. When I was growing up, I did well at school, but it never seemed to be an option to be a gardener or to in, do anything related, like be a, a landscape architect. And so I ended up studying outdoor education because I loved the natural world. And then during that time, I actually worked for an amazing nursery and I worked with this incredible fount of knowledge in Australian native plants, Marilyn Sprague, and I worked for her for many years and I just felt like I absorbed such a, a passion for plants and for growing plants as well, for again collecting seeds but also the propagating of them, them enjoying them, flower, you know, all the subtleties of Goldfields plants. But after a while, I found myself in Alice Springs and worked there with a science and technology, an indigenous company up there. But I think plants were always calling to me. So when I moved with my partner back down south, I was in South Australia and I just threw in my job and I started studying horticulture full time. And from that point, I haven't looked back. Like. Like I think plants gets you in the end and it took a while for me to be able to pursue it as a vocation, but now I'm not looking back. We're in this incredible McClellan Gallery and Sculpture Park. It's in a bushland setting. It's about a 10 minute drive away from where I live. And it's such a natural kind of partnership to come to McClellan as a plant practitioner and actually grow a sculptural piece, actually grow an artwork. There are so many parallels between the practice of gardening and the practice of art or art practices. And it's the perfect place to kind of explore what those parallels are and pilot work as well. This piece, Work Tended, it's exploring the dynamic ways that we create art and how it's influenced by the cycles and the seasons of nature. It's a work that's been buffeted by the seasons, by storms, by dry. And it's also how we've looked at how we actually create and use plants as a canvas, that we can look at the repetition, the use of colour, and how we actually have these dynamic artworks in our gardens, but also in sculptural spaces. Through three seed mixes, I've sown more than 20 species in this work. Some of them have succeeded, some of them haven't liked the wet summer, but that's all part of piloting work and exploring what works in this situation. I am a massive fan of paper daisies and other tactile flowers for public space design and for artworks as well. It's about actually touching the work. And so to have this effect, we've used a huge range of these iconic paper daisies or everlasting daisies. Some of my favourites like Xerocrysum bracticum, which has this incredible kind of colour palette throughout the whole work. There are Rodanthe chlorocephalas, which are those incredible paper daisies. There's other things that have kind of come and gone throughout the seasons. And to consider that palette so that it's readable in this space, we have a whole lot of salmon zinnia lilliput you know, floating through the space that, you know, respond to the zero cries and paper daisies as well. I can't actually envisage a life that I don't have plants in it. There has always been an element of nature, of plants, like it's where I'm at home. <laughs>